Christelle. Let's talk about IPM. Hi, Leslie. Yeah, that would be great. So how would you define IPM? So IPM is integrated pest management. So it's a way of managing your crop, whether it's cranberry or any other crop, in a very integrated way and using different strategies and the timing of those strategies to have optimal management for your pests, but in a very um, positive way for the crop and for the environment, because you're really targeting at the different stages of the crop, which strategy is gonna be the best. And so instead of relying on a single strategy, say for example, chemical control, you would rely on different strategies. And so strategies that we use are gonna be cultural control strategies, and we'll talk about that later, um, biological control, um, host plant resistance, chemical control, um, those are the different strategies that we want to integrate together in finding the best strategy for the specific pest that you're looking at. And scouting is the foundation of a good IPM program. So you're scouting for your pest, and depending on which pest you have and which time of the year you are, there's going to be a strategy that's going to be more appropriate for that time of the year. Um, and you're integrating all of those into an IPM program. So could you tell us a little bit more about how you would implement IPM for disease management? Certainly. I think the first big step you would take is relying on genetics. And when I say genetics, I mean using cultivars that are resistant to fruit rot disease, which is one of the main diseases for cranberry growers. Second, you could use cultural controls. So we can do things like sanding to keep the vines healthy so that they're uh, more resistant to getting that fruit rot disease. We can do something called trash floods, which helps prevent all that overwintering inoculum from our pathogens and pulls it right out of the bed. Even water management would be a really ideal strategy to keep our vines healthy and keep the conditions less conducive for pathogens. So I think these would be really important cultural controls for fruit rot disease. Additionally, chemical management, but we want to rely on that after we've already implemented genetics and cultural control practices. How would we do something like this for insects? Oh, so for insects, it, I mean, Everything you're talking about would apply in a very nice way. So sanding is used, for example, as a cultural practice for um, helping in kind of like suppressing the emergence of some of those pests in the beds. Um, thrush flood has, flood has been shown to also decrease uh, pest population and remove kind of one spray in the season early in the spring. So that's also good for management. It also provide uh, additional biological control when you do the, the trash flood in the spring. So that leads us into another strategy, which is biological control, which we talked about already, but that will help in conserving the natural enemies that are present in the system. And then there's also host plant resistance. That could be something that we're looking at. So that goes back to the genetics. What are cultivars that are less or more susceptible to some of those insect pests? That has not been so developed so much in, uh, in cranberry, but there is some signs of um, some cultivars that are more or less susceptible. And then, of course, we also have um, chemical control. And how do you integrate those chemical controls so that you do not target those beneficial insects? You're not killing those natural enemies. You're also protecting your pollinators, so avoiding the pollinators at that time. So there's all of that is a, a big complex. I mean, we're talking about an agroecosystem, and everything needs to work together to get to this beautiful cranberry crop that we have. So ecosystem management. Sounds like there's a lot we can do to maintain our cranberry crop. Exactly. Thanks, Christophe.